Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 104. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 11, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class section. Hey, we're in chapter 11 and last chapter, chapter 10, we looked at historical data and we calculated arithmetic mean and geo mean and standard deviation. The averages gave us a typical value we could use to predict the future. And the standard deviation helped us gauge the variability and return the volatility or the risk. Now here in this chapter, we're going to be estimating the unknown future. So here's our example. We have a stock A and a stock B. And we want to estimate for the future what the expected returns uh, might be and what the standard deviation is for the stock. Now we've had to estimate. So we say states of economy, maybe we think we're going to be three different ones, down, normal, and up, right? And based on past data, frequency tables, we estimated uh, probability of the state of the economy. And looking at past data, we estimated what we think each stock, stock A, will return in each one of these states. Now, this these estimates are based on past data and also future projections. Now, what we're going to do here is pretty straightforward. We're going to say, well, if there's a probability of 0.45 that we're going to be in a recession and the return that we think we'd get in a recession is this, we'll simply multiply the probability times this. And then we'll take the probability of normal times the rate we expect here, multiply those, and we'll continue this on down and add them all up. Because it's assumed that these, these data move like a random variable, we're going to use this probability statistical technique called expected return. All right, so let's get right to it. I'm going to say the probability of the state times the return. Now I'm going to enter this and copy it down. You could see their relative cell references. And now I simply have to add them up. Equals SUM. And there is my expected return. And the way we write this is E and then R sub A. That means the ex expected return for this particular asset, asset A. We can then do the same thing over here, the probability times the rate we've estimated. Copy it down and then add it up. All right, so this way we did it the long hand way. And it's very important to do this the long hand way and see that, um, you know, how we did this. But once you get the hang of it, you do it a few times. You know, we want to see a single cell method to calculate the expected return. Now I want you to notice some. What do we do here? We multiply this times this, this times this, and added them, right? And this times this. Now notice if this blue box was here, but it was here and here, uh, the whole column, if we could multiply it times this whole column, uh, and then add, if there was a special function that did that, we would use it, right? Well, sure enough, there is one. It's called sum product. And sum product is just like it sounds. It multiplies, which is product, and then adds. The arguments you put in are arrays. So you can simply highlight the uh, one array, comma, and then the other array. Now, these arrays have to be exactly the same dimension. This is uh, three rows and one column. And that way it knows. It'll take all the elements here, multiply them by all of the elements here. So this times that, and then plus this times that, plus this times that. Sum product. Totally beautiful. Now, I'm going to enter this just to show you. It gives you the same thing much faster than doing that whole thing there. But now, I want to think about the cell reference because I want to copy this over. So I want this blue one to be multiplied by this one over here when I copy it over to this cell. So I'm simply going to lock this one and leave this one relative. Click there, F4. Click there, F4. Now I can copy this over. Same thing. So now, step one here, we calculated our expected uh, return, which is a type of average when estimating how a random variable moves in the future. All right, now, we would, would like also to calculate standard deviation, which will be our measure of risk or volatility, just as we did uh, in chapter 10, we're going to set up a little uh, table. Now, 
this is the same as we did last time in that we have to calculate. Actually, let me uh, hide these. I'm going to hide these rows here like that. I highlighted the row headers and then right click hide. Now, just as we did last chapter with historical data, we calculated an average. And then here we have three returns. Well, if we calculate the uh, deviation between each one of these values here and then square them, add them up, divide by the count, that would sound like what we did last chapter. The only difference here is we're going to take the actual return, <clears throat> that one right there, minus the expected return, that's our average, squared. And then we have to multiply it by the probability because we're estimating um, uh, these amounts for the future, the unknown future. All right, so we're going to say equals open parentheses. I'm going to take the actual return minus the expected value. Now, this, when I copy this down, it needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4, close parentheses, caret 2. That's just like we did last time. The only difference is since we have a number of different values and a number of different probabilities, we're going to have to multiply it by the probability. All right, control enter. I'm going to copy it down right to 3. Now, just like we did uh, last chapter, we're going to add these up. Now, we added these up, but unlike last chapter where we added them up and divided by the count, we don't have to do that here. We have a probability. We're multiplying each one of these times these probabilities. This is a type of weighted average. So at this point, we simply add them up. And now we have to take the square root. We have up here, we squared everything, right? And when we square it, we have to get it back down to the same unit by taking the square root of the final uh, total. So I'm going to use the square root, our SQRT function. And then we have our estimate for standard deviation. Our, this is our estimate, that's our standard deviation, our estimate of our total risk. This is the volatility or the risk of the stock. Now, I have denoted it as SD sub A, so standard deviation of this particular stock A. In the textbook, they use a little sigma stock A. Now, we can do the same thing over here. Equals the particular, open parenthesis, the particular value minus our expected return, which is our type of average. F4 to lock it. Caret 2 times the probability. And then I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to add it. Alt equals, keyboard shortcut for auto sum. And then because we squared it, we need to bring the units back down. So we'll use square root. So we have an expected turn of 0 0.045 with a standard deviation of 0 0.08. Uh, expected return of 3.4% and um, standard deviation of 0.21. That is our estimate of risk. Now, um, for this particular class, that's all you need to do. I am going to show you a single cell formula, but this is kind of beyond the scope of the type of formulas we do here. Now, I want to think about this. Look at this here in relation to here for a single cell formula. Notice as we copy this down, right, we took this whole column. And from this whole column, we subtracted a single value. Then we raised it to 2. And then it's as if, if we're going to copy this down and add it, right? We are um, used this whole column here. And we can illustrate that. See the, the lavender and the blue box? If I hit Enter and F2, Enter uh, to F2, you can see how we really used both of those columns there. So we can come down here. We're ultimately going to have to add all of these. And notice we're multiplying. So we're going to create in the sum product this part, and then comma, because sum product multiplies, and then this other uh, range of probabilities here. Then that'll be inside the sum product, and then inside of that, We'll give, actually, let's see if we can do th get this number first, and then we'll just put square root on the outside. So I'm going to say equals sum product. And the array is going to be open parentheses, our actual returns, minus our uh, expected return. 
Now, this is in the realm of array formulas because we have a bunch of values and we're subtracting a single value. So that's why we have to use some product, right? So we close parentheses on that. Square, and that gives us this part right here. Now we just type a comma and go get our probabilities. And then close parentheses on the sum product. If I hit enter, you can see we get that amount right there. And now to get the square root, we simply say square root. There is a square root function. Now, uh, to copy this over, I'm also going to think about cell references, the only ones I need to worry about. These all need to move relatively. That needs to move over, that needs to move over, but this one doesn't. So I'm going to come here and hit the F4. Control Enter, and then copy it over. Okay, so standard deviation, a measure of uh, risk. It is the total risk, as we'll see uh, later on in this chapter. There are uh, two types of risk, but this is uh, the total risk for us. All right, so that was a little bit. I'm going to highlight these to unhide them. The 5 and the 14, right-click, unhide. We saw how to do right-click, I hid, right-click, unhide. <laughs> We saw how to do expected return for a single stock, and we saw how to do standard deviation for a single stock. When we come back in the next, next video, we'll see how to do expected return and standard deviation for a portfolio of stocks. All right, see you next video.